Hello. Today's In the Hoop project is this adorable mouse pad. Yes, this really does work as a mouse pad. You can, it comes with the text, welcome to our mouse pad, but you can change out the hour and replace it with some custom text. So the design is available as a seven and a half by nine size. That's your standard mouse pad size. I also shrunk it down a little bit to fit the eight by eight hoop or uh, want a version which will fit in the five by seven hoop. You can do more standard mouse and mushroom colors. You can make them a little more funky. You can do uh, however you want to change up this design. It's a lot of fun to work with. So the question everybody asks is, does it work? Yes, this mouse pad really works with most, uh, most mouses, mice. As you can see, I've got the thread guide here on my PC. Usually I print this out, but I figured I'd bring it up on the PC today just to show the mouse does work. And this, of course, will show you which each uh, run is and what that run is. And then if you need to do something like place the batting over it and then what it's going to stitch or what it's going to be doing, the grass, you know, so you kind of know you want to use a green or whatever. The design also includes full instructions. These will give you an overview uh, the files involved in each, uh, so you can pick out which size you want to know which file you need to use, uh, your materials, some tips, and then there is uh, detailed instruction with a little checkbox so you can keep track of where you are. So let's get over our materials here. I've got a eight or a nine by 10 piece of fabric for the top of it. And if you're not sure whether the fabric will work good or not, you know, you might want to, if it's something metallic or with sparkle may not work, just put it, put it down and put your mouse on it and make sure that your mouse works nice on that fabric. I have also fused to the back of this piece of fabric a piece of stabilizer. Uh, this helps keep shifting during the design. The design is about 30,000 stitches. It also will help make the mouse pad a little stiffer so that it will stand up a little nicer. I've got a piece of batting the same size. Uh, you can really use anything. I use the scraps for my mother's quilts, but you can even upcycle an old sweatshirt, whatever kind of batting or fill you want. I've also got a piece of vinyl for the back of the fabric. Now with the vinyl, it's real important to make sure that the vinyl is something that's not going to slip. I found that some of your vinyls, especially these stiffer vinyls, something like this, this I found slides so uh, I actually put that on the back of this one by accident and you know when you go to use it you get the mouse pad can move around on you. So make sure your vinyl is not going to be slippery. I found that uh, this one it kind of looks almost like a uh, faux leather and it's a little softer. I've got it in a couple different colors but this one I found is pretty nice for the back of the mouse pads. It's, it's uh, you know does not slide on you. In addition I've got a piece of fabric uh, about three by four for the mouse and a four by four piece for the mushroom. I've got my little scissors here. Uh, these have a nice curve at the tip which make them really good for trimming the applique. I've got my 505 temporary adhesive spray. That I will be using between on the back of each layer before I put it in the hoop. I usually spray this outside. I do not like to spray that near my machine or my PC, but I will be using this on the backs of the layers. In addition, I've got some stabilizer already in my hoop. I've got the regular wash away stabilizer here. Uh, it's the fabric looking kind, not the plastic kind. And you notice I have a little bit extra, it seems like, hanging off the ends. That way when I trim it after the project's done, the piece that I'm left with is big enough to use in my 4x4 hoop for other projects. I've also put some tape along the long edge of that hoop. That will help keep the stabilizer from shifting while you're embroidering. And the other thing that I really like to do is I put a little square of tape on one side of my hoop. That lets me keep track of which ways it goes in and out of the uh, machine so that I don't turn it around while I'm stitching. So I think we've got everything here. We're all set. Let's go on over to our machine and get this in there and get started. So if you have a multi-needle machine, you probably want to go into your edit mode, uh, something like that, that's going to let you edit. And this allows you to add stops and to select the color that you want for each run. 
And one of the things I like to do on my white runs, I actually change them to a darker shade just so it shows up a little nicer on the screen. But once you've set all of your colors, you'll be good to go. Of course, if you have a single needle, you don't need to worry about that because it's going to stop after each run. So we're going to go ahead and start with our first run here. And this is going to stitch a uh, placement line to show us where to put the batting in the front fabric. <laughs> stitched so I'm going to take my hoop out of the machine I'm going to take it over to my work area here now I've already taken and I've put sprayed a little 505 and put my top fabric over my batting and then I put a little more 505 on the back of my batting and I'm going to simply place those over the uh, stitches So, and then one of the things you can do is I like to turn the hoop over and you can kind of see that stitched line and then you can see the outline of the fabric and the batting behind it. So I know that I've got enough room there to uh, allow for stitching and for me to trim when I'm done. So we'll put this back in the hoop. I'll keep my little uh, pink tape to the left side there. It's going to stitch this in place and then it's going to stitch the green grass. And then it's going to stitch a placement run for the mouse and the mushroom, and that's when we'll stop again to put that fabric down. The top layers have been stitched down, the grass has been stitched, the mushroom and mouse pieces have uh, been, placement lines have been stitched. So I'm just going to put my mushroom piece over that and just lift up those edges a little bit make sure that you, know, you get enough room around them for uh for the placement lines so that's good and i'm gonna let that get stitched and then we'll take it off and then we'll put our mouse fabric down so put this back in the hoop keep my little piece of tape to the left there Okay, the mushroom has been stitched down. I'll come over here and I'm just going to trim. Uh, you can trim the whole thing now or I just you do them both at once. I'm just going to trim a little bit here though so that I don't want this over top of the mouse so that it gets stitched down when my mouse fabric is stitched in place. So that's good. I'm going to put my mouse fabric down and again we'll just lift up a little bit. Yeah, we got plenty of room there. We're good there. We're good there. So we can put him down and put this back in the machine and we'll stitch that in place and then we will trim the edge of both the mushroom and the mouse. Been stitched down. I'm going to bring them over so that I can trim the edges. Now, as I said, you could have trimmed the mushroom after it was stitched and then done the mouse. I like to just do them both at once. So these little curved scissors, as I said, work really nice. You just kind of get in there and you want to trim this as close as you can to the stitches. And I just lift up the fabric a little bit and then just stitch right along it with these scissors. and just stitch and then turn it as needed. Lift up your fabric a little bit and I pull slightly with this left hand while I'm trimming with this hand and that just helps keep it up nice up against the stitches so it's real easy. Okay, so the Mouse is all trimmed. I'll start on the mushroom. And again, I'm just going to pull up on the edge of the fabric. And 
and snip as close as I can to those placement lines. Turn it a little bit, get your fabric loose, pull, snip, turn. So a couple more snips here and we'll be done. Okay, we're going to put this back in the machine. It's got a little bit of embroidery to do now. It's going to stitch a lot of the details and I'm going to have it stopped again when we get to the text so that I can show you what we need to do there if you want to make some text options. Okay, so I've just stitched out the text R on this mouse pad. If you want it to make this a custom text on here, you can, of course, go over here, you know, use your little plus minus button. And usually there's a uh, spool, you can advance by spool. So you would just hit that and that would take you to the next color. And you could skip that text here and you could go out on your machine and insert text and position it there and stitch the text of your choice there. So let's continue stitching here. And okay, we'll... our placement run has been stitched. This reminds us where the back goes and it also gives us a run for stitching the or trimming the front edges here. We're going to go ahead and trim the front. And if you notice, you sometimes do get a little bit of pull. You can see uh, where that black is from where our original white is. And that's why you don't trim this until this right before we add the back. So I'm just going to go uh, lift up these edges here, get them loose, and then just take my scissors and trim right along that edge. Just pull up slightly again with your uh, one hand while you're trimming with the other one. Turn it as you go around these corners. Lift up that side. And continue trimming. So I'll just finish trimming all of these edges and then we can turn it over to put our back vinyl on. You can kill I've finished trimming the front edges here and go back after you're done and just you know make sure if you've got any places where the batting really seems to be sticking out just go ahead and give those an extra little snip there. So I'm going to turn this over and uh, if you want, you can go ahead and trim any uh, the threads on the back. You won't have another opportunity to, especially those near the edges, it is important to trim. Okay, now I've sprayed this with some 505 and I'm going to just put this over the back and I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna press Make sure it doesn't slide anywhere where all it's stitching. And that looks like I've got plenty around. Now, you've got to be careful when you put this back in your machine. You want to make sure that the vinyl doesn't get caught up on anything and out of place. So uh, make sure that, you know, you've got your hand kind of here supporting it underneath the, as it slides on so it doesn't, oops, I'm just trying to get stuck here. So the vinyl, again, you want to make sure it is there we go but yes yeah, so I want to make sure that your vinyl is free and where it should be it's not stuck on anything or bumped up so we're going to go ahead and we'll stitch that vinyl in place all right the back has been secured in place we can give that a quick trim and just like we did with the others, just going to... So I'll just continue, as I said, and we trim the back just like we did the front and the rest of the applique. And this is ready to go back on our machine. Now, one thing I'm also going to do here is, uh, since this is going to show on the back, I'm going to change my bobbin thread from the white to a blue, which I've been using for the... Uh, final run. Oops, I don't think I pulled my blue thread through. So 
So I've got matching top and bobbin thread uh, so it'll look a little nicer on the back of the mouse pad. So we'll just slide him back in there and let that final run finish. And uh, we will be all set. sweetheart. We can remove our hoop from the machine and at this point we can go ahead and remove the design from the hoop. I'm just going to take off my uh, tape there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim my stabilizer down a little bit just so it's a little easier to handle and remove. So we're going to get rid of some of that excess stabilizer and I'm just going to do maybe got about an inch border. And these pieces, if you notice, are now large enough that I can use them. If you remember, I said I make that a little extra long. That's so that those are now usable for my 4x4 hoop. So they'll fit perfectly there. Let's get this tape off of this edge here. So I'm now going to take this in the other room where I've got my sink. I've already filled some water in the sink. I've got a towel here and I've got a little cup. I don't like to put this down the drain. I try and get it to go into that cup if I can. So I'm just going to dip this, these edges real quick. And I'm just dipping them so that the uh, stabilizer goes in the water in the sink just right up to the edge. And the uh, actual design is going to stay dry. And I'm just going to now pull that stabilizer off. It should peel away real nice and easy. And I can drop that right in that cup as opposed to down my drain. And uh, you can dip your fingers and run them along the edge. If there's any little bit of bits of stabilizer left there, it'll just melt away. So I'm going to take this in the other room and I'm just going to give that a quick pressing and we'll be all done and ready to use our mouse pad. Do be careful with the vinyl back. You don't want to put the iron on the vinyl. That uh, usually causes melting. You can, however, if you need to iron your vinyl before you start, if it's uh, got a wrinkle in it, you can iron it from the back side, but never on the good side of the vinyl. Okay, we've now got another mouse pad to add to our collection. Ready for use with your favorite mouse. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. If so, please like and share this channel for more In The Hoop projects from LLH Embroidery.